let's race again. The Volvo Ocean Race represents one of the toughest challenges for man, machine, and equipment in the world today. Sailed around the world over nine legs and covering eight months, it's hazardous, demanding, and grueling, and takes the competitors into some of the wildest, coldest, and wettest environments known to man. This DVD is a brief insight into some of the conditions encountered and includes an introduction to the Volvo Ocean Race by Mike Sanderson, the skipper of ABN AMRO 1, the winning boat in the 2005-2006 race. He also discusses the conditions and the use of musto foul weather gear and how it contributed to his team's success. Watch, listen and enjoy. The Volvo Ocean Race now has raced over nine legs as we make our way around the world. Something new this time was the fact that we actually had seven import races as well. So not only this time did these boats have to be marathon races around the world, um, but also you had to be able to race them in a fleet race situation where the whole fleet was racing against each other around a series of boys like an America's Cup course right in the harbour. So this brought a new, a nice new mix to the Volvo Ocean Race. It was actually worth 20% of the points, so we had to uh, take it seriously, if you like. So we had to wait a week for the start of the start of the first leg, and sure enough, on the on the, the first night of the first leg, um, the whole fleet saw a lot of wind, up to 55 knots of breeze on some boats, and so we had this fantastic contrast of the first import race being five or six six knots of wind in the first night of the first leg being as much as 50 so for sure we got straight into the taste of the Volvo Ocean Race and, and life at the extreme so to speak. We had our problems, we broke a steering pedestal out of the boat and we the first night and on the second night we actually had a fire on board with a battery short but we went on to win score maximum points at the, at the scoring gate and we went on to, to win the leg which for me was very significant because um, the, the boat that's always won the first leg has, has gone on to win the Whitbread Race or Volvo Ocean Race. From then it was down to the Southern Ocean. We were lucky enough to win into Melbourne and had a good leg there. Lost into Wellington by nine seconds, which uh, was an unbelievable finish, us versus movie star. A little disappointing coming into my home port, uh, home country of New Zealand, to lose by such a small margin, but uh, the movie star guys sailed well for the last bit in particular to get past this. So a, a roller coaster finish across the Atlantic for sure. As the legs got lighter, our, uh, our, we finished into Gothenburg um, last in fact. So we finished the way we started. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much a quick summary of AB and Amro's race around the world. Ended up winning um, six out of nine legs and five out of seven import races. For the 2005-2006 Volvo Ocean Race, we obviously needed the best wet weather gear and performance clothing that we could get, uh, you know, to keep the guys warm and dry. When we're racing against the world, we don't need to be worrying about the gear, we need to be worrying about the competition and keeping the boat in one piece. So it was a very easy decision to go with Musto, obviously a fantastic track record of, of building this sort of performance clothing. and. Um, the last time I went around the world we had great success with Musto as well, so it was a pretty easy decision. This was my third time around the world in the Volvo Ocean Race, of course previously known as the Whitbread Round the World Race. The first time unfortunately we didn't use Musto gear back in 93-94 and we got a little bit wet and cold, but uh, in 97-98 it was the first time uh, uh, I realised how much difference it could make using Musto wet weather gear uh, in a race around the world. and there. And that time in particular was the first time we experienced working with Musto, especially to come up with something purposefully built for us. And um, right then it was easy to identify that uh, the guys were very keen to get involved um, in keeping us warm and dry. And um, so that was something which I certainly remembered when it came round to choosing a, a wet weather gear supplier for this version of the race. Once the decision was made to work with Musto for our technical clothing, um, everyone really got behind it and we really realised that 
the more we worked together with Musto, the, the, the warmer and the drier we were going to be and the more comfortable we were going to be, which is very important in those extreme conditions. Um, and quickly, as the team started gathering in uh, Vigo before the start of the race, uh, we worked out that uh, six out of seven of the teams actually in the Volvo Ocean Race this time had also gone on to choose Musto and it obviously identified the same very important criteria of what, what makes a, a great technical clothing supplier for such an extreme race. We look good this way. Okay, it's good this way, Paul. When you're racing around the world, obviously keeping warm and dry is even more critical than it is on a day race. In a day race situation, let's be honest, you're back in the shower by the end of the day, so if you're a little bit wet and a little bit salty, well it doesn't really matter that much. Um, racing around the world, obviously we really have to look after the people, and as the race is getting more and more extreme, that's obviously becoming more and more vital. Um, these new boats are radical, they're ploughing through huge amounts of water, um, and to keep the guys at the top of their game, um, we really have to do everything we can to make an incredibly uncomfortable situation as, un as comfortable as possible. So for racing around the world, it's a it's, it's very important factor. Yeah, I mean, one thing that was new about this version of the Volvo Ocean Race was the new Volvo 70 class. And, um, you know, one reason why it was so uh, important to have such a close relationship with your technical wet weather gear manufacturer was that these boats were going to be extreme. They were going to, you know, we saw speeds over 40 knots. I think ABN Emerald One's top speed was 42.6. And, um, you know, any 70 footer doing over 25 knots is going to throw an awful lot of water around. And so I think we were very much breaking new ground and it, that's why it was so vital to work with Musto to come up with something which really was going to do go the extra yard for us. Um, and you know, so with the extreme boats we needed a new extreme clothing almost. So uh, for sure the, the gains of that are going to come, are going to appear on the, on, the, on the shelves in the shops for everyone else to use. And it's a very nice day of sailing in the Southern Ocean, made even more exciting for us by the fact that we've got another boat just in front of us, and we're catching them nicely. In about just over an hour, we're going to be driving and putting up a spinnaker. Hopefully by then we'll be about right next to them. The scoring waypoint is coming up pretty soon. It's uh, 1,800 miles to the Horn. Current speed, we'll do it in uh, just over three days. So I'll be having a ball, but it's bloody wet on deck. And uh, as you can imagine as well, sleeping is nearly impossible. But if you just have a little look outside, you can see the guy standing over there. And uh, three guys on the pumps, one guy trimming and one driver. So it's just working, working, working the entire time. And a bit of water coming over as well sometimes. <laughs> 